Dear students, today I would like to talk about the female genitalia organs. I have two lectures, so today I would like to tell you, describe you the ovary, the fallopian tube, and the uterus, and the menstrual cycle. This will be in this presentation, and I will have another presentation about the second part, what you will see later. So let's see uh, what are the female genital organs. Here you can see a picture about the organs. The first one, this is the ovary. This is a paired organ, like a small uh, two. Here we have two centimeter. The diameter is approximately two centimeter. After there, you can see this Q-shaped organ. This is the fallopian tube. In the fallopian tube, can reach the um, uh, the oocyte after the ovulation. Through this tube, can go towards the cavity of the uterus. After this one, this is the uterus. We can divide the uterus into two main parts. The first part is called the body of the uterus, and the lower part is called the cervix of the uterus, we will see it later. And finally, this structure is called the vagina. What is the ovary? The main function of the ovary, here we have the development of the follicles, and uh, there will be the ovulation, which is also uh, there on the surface of the ovary. Here you can see the paired organ. Only just one part of the ovary is covered by a simple squamous epithelium, which is called the peritoneum. And the other part is free. And there we have the ovulation, what I told you uh, earlier. The ovary, the fallopian tube, and the uterus, is, these are fixed to the lateral wall of the pelvis uh, by this uh, layer, by this uh, special uh, serous membrane which is called the peritoneum. And uh, this peritoneum will form ligaments, will form ligaments. This ligament, which is located on the lateral sides of the uterus, is called the broad ligament of the uterus or ligamentum latum. Uteri. This is uh, this very well visible structure which will fix the uterus and all of these structures to the lateral wall of the pelvis. What do you have within this double layer of the peritoneum? Uh, there, this double layer which will fix the uh, fallopian tube is called the mesosalpinx. But that which will fix the ovary is called the mass ovary. And within this double layer, we can find a very rich anastomosis of the vessels, which is the anastomosis of the uterine artery from downward. Here we have branches which will supply the fallopian tube and the ovary. It's called the tuberian and the ovarian branches. And we have another uh, artery, which is the ovarian artery, which is originated from the abdominal aorta. These vessels, they will form an anastomosis, a very, very rich anastomosis, and will supply these structures. Here you can see the schematic picture of the ovary, where we can follow the development of the follicles from the beginning and until uh, the mature form of uh, the follicle. First, we can divide the ovary into two main parts. There we can see the cortex, the outermost part is called the cortex. Here in the cortex we can see the different stages of the developing follicles. And in the middle, this part is called the medulla, where we have the vessels, the nerve cross-sections, which will supply the organ. This double layer of the peritoneum, which is called the mesovary, what I told you earlier, 
and after, which is simple squamous, but later, this part of the ovary will be free, it will, won't be covered by the peritoneum. There will be on the surface, uh, will be the ovulation. So, what's happening here within the ovary? There we have the development of the follicles, what I said, but what is a follicle? Uh, here you can see the smallest follicle, which is called the primordial or primary follicle. Within this follicle, we have a primary oocyte, which is um, in a resting phase, the prophase of the first meiotic cell division. Here we have a duplication of the DNA, but this is in a resting uh, position now. And this primary oocyte is surrounded by a follicular epithelium and this follicular epithelium is called the layer of the granulosa cells. So this is a primordial or primary follicle which is approximately 30 to 60 micrometer. And after uh, we'll start the development of the follicle. Uh, it's um, uh, the follicular stimulating hormone from the pituitary gland will stimulate, will regulate the development of the follicles, the FSH, this is the name of the hormone. So the granulosa cells, they will grow and they will form many, many layers. And in this stage, we are talking about secondary follicle, which is approximately 100, 120 micrometer. These are granulosa cells there. Here is a primary oocyte, which is uh, visible in this picture. And after, when uh, this layer will be uh, thicker and th thicker, the granulosa cells, they will die and they will form Antrum, small cavities between the granulosa cells. This is a tertiary or antral uh, follicle, early antral follicle. And here you can see the final stage of the development. This is a tertiary follicle or graphium follicle. This is a primary oocyte there in the middle, which is surrounded by an eosinophilic layer, which is called the zona pellucida. You will hear about it uh, in the developmental uh, presentation lectures. This is the part of the granulosa cells, which will form the cumulus ophorus. We can find a very huge follicular antrum surrounded by the granulosa cells. And after you can see one more layer uh, or two more layers which will develop from the connective tissue, from the stroma, from cell rich connective tissue which will be between the follicles. These are the external and internal theca layers. The theca layers, the theca cells and the granulosa cells, they will produce the oestrogen, which is the hormone, the main hormone, female hormone. What's happening after if we have a tertiary follicle, major follicle, uh, because of the effect of LH. The LH is another hormone, it's called luteinizing hormone, also from the pituitary uh, gland. It will form a peak and it will activate the ovulation where the uh, primary uh, oocyte will finish the first meiotic cell division and like a secondary oocyte will leave the uh, ovary. Here you can see the oocyte which is surrounded by the granulosa cells. Uh, this is what you can see, uh, this picture on this picture, which uh, with endoscopic uh, uh, cam, uh, it's um, and these pictures, they uh, are from the uh, abdominal cavity yeah, with special endoscopic examination. So first, here you can see the ovary and on the surface of the ovary is really visible uh, this enlarged tertiary follicle. This is called the stigma, this very special part of the surface of the ovary is called the stigma. And after here is the um, ovulated uh, oocyte, there is the egg, here you can see on this 
picture very well. So what's happening after the ovulation? There you can see a very small bleeding within uh, the lumen of this structure, which is called corpus luteum, corpus hemorragicum at the beginning, and after we have corpus luteum. This is a very huge, big corpus luteum, which is visible on this uh, picture. Uh, the corpus luteum will produce the progesterone, which is the second hormone of the female uh, genitalia, which, is, which will be the dominant hormone in the second part of the menstrual cycle after the ovulation. What's the function of the progesterone? The progesterone, it will help to the endometrium uh, in the development. Here we'll start in the endometrium, we'll start the secretory function of the glands and the cells which are located in the endometrium, they will store a lot of nutrition and the whole endometrium with these cells, they are waiting for the implanted embryo because they will be, you know, the food uh, of the implanted embryo in this stage. So, <clears throat> if uh, we have fertilization, if we have fertilization, the fertilized egg will start to implant to the surface of the endometrium. And after the trophoblast cells, which are the special cells of the blastocyst, what we will uh, learn uh, during uh, the embryological part uh, of the histology. So the trophoblast cells will produce human choreogonadotropin hormone. And this hormone will help uh, to the corpus luteum to be survive. And the corpus luteum will produce uh, progesterone uh, in the first part of the whole pregnancy until the placenta will be able to produce enough progesterone uh, for the uh, embryo. So this one, what we can see uh, in this picture, the human choreogonadotropin hormone is that what we can show in the pregnancy tests because uh, after a few days after the implantation, we can measure very well the level of this hormone in the blood sample of the pregnant women. Here you can see two pictures. The first picture uh, will show you the stages of the development of the follicles. Here you can see the first part from the primordial follicle until the preantral secondary follicle. Here you can see that this stage is more than 120 days, so approximately four months. And after this is from the secondary follicle, you can see another stage will be until the tertiary follicle. It's also two more months. And here you can see the development of the tertiary follicle, which will be within one cycle exactly. This is the end, a very rapid uh, maturation part. These are only just uh, um, uh, 15 days. So what you can see here, that the development of the follicle from the primordial stage until the tertiary follicle, it is more than five, six, months. Yeah? So, uh, this picture, the lower uh, picture, uh, will show you the changes of the hormone levels uh, during the menstrual cycle. The first one, the yellowish one, is the FSH, the follicular stimulating hormone from the pituitary gland, which will stimulate the development of the follicles um, uh, during the cycle. It will be a little bigger level during the ovulation. This is the second hormone, which is the LH. It will form a peak uh, before few uh, days, a little before the ovulation, because this will stimulate the graphium follicles to 
ovulation. And after the two other hormones, the estrogen, this is the pink one here, you can see that we have also estrogen in both phases of the menstrual cycle. But the other hormone, which is the progesterone, it is produced by the corpus luteum. So we can see the elevation of this hormone only just in the second part of the menstrual cycle after the ovulation is called the progesterone phase or the secretory phase of the uterus. Um, this is a summary about the hormonal regulation of uh, these functions. Here you can see the highest level of the hormonal regulation, which is the hypothalamus. In the hypothalamus, the special cells will produce gonadotropin-releasing hormone. This hormone will stimulate the pituitary gland, and the cells in the pituitary gland will produce first FSH, follicular stimulating hormone. The follicular stimulating hormone will, uh, will regulate the development of the follicles. The follicles will produce estrogen. The estrogen will have effect on the pituitary. You will learn about the uh, regulation, endocrine regulation, so the hormone levels of the periphery always act on the centers. And here you can see that. And after, from the pituitary, will be the LH peak. After the LH peak, we can see the ovulation. And after this, the corpus luteum, which will remain within the ovary, it will produce the progesterone, which is the main hormone of the second part of the menstrual cycle. Why is it important to know the hormonal regulation of these parts? Because a lot of medicines, for example, the birth control pills, they will own this effect. The birth control pills, uh, they contain estrogen. If we have a higher estrogen level in the periphery, it will inhibit the release of the LH from the pituitary, and that's why we have no ovulation. So this is the way how we can control um, the uh, hormonal regulation of the menstrual cycle. But we have to know that these birth control pills, they have a lot of side effects. For example, thrombosis, stroke uh, can develop. So that's why uh, the aim is to decrease the hormone level of these pills. Uh, to protect uh, against the different side effects. So that's why we have other, um, other special um, uh, instruments, for example, special pads. From this, uh, the hormone will absorb through the skin, or uh, also we can apply vaginal rings where from this ring will uh, absorb the uh, hormones through the wall of the vagina. And you have to know it very well because you will, be, you will work in the pharmacy and your patients will ask, you have to describe uh, the function or the mechanism of the, birth, the effect of the birth control pills. Uh, the next picture will uh, show you the histological uh, structure of the ovary. Uh, this is the medulla there. Here we can see the cortex. In the medulla, we have the cross-sections of the vessels, the nerves. And there in the cortex, we can see the different stages of the developing follicles. The smallest one, they are the primordial follicle. This bigger one is a tertiary follicle. You can see also a big corpus luteum. And also we can see degenerating follicles too. These are those follicles which are mature, so undergo the development, but they did not ovulate it. Well, they didn't ovulate. So here you can see on the surface of the ovary, we can see 
the finger-like protrusions of the fallopian tube, which is called the fimbria of the ovary. These fimbria, they will cover the surface of the ovary, but we have no direct connection between the ovary and the fallopian tube, so that's why the ovulation will be directly to the cavity, to the abdominal cavity. So here you can see the cortex again with the different stages of developing follicle, primordial and primary follicle, they are the smallest one. And this one, this big one, this is a secondary follicle, which is approximately 100 micrometer, with the primary oocyte in the middle, surrounded by the zona pellucida and the granulosa cells, which will form many layers. This is a higher magnification of the tertiary major follicle. In the middle of the tertiary follicle, there you can see a primary oocyte again. The granulosa cells, they are around. We can see the antrum with liquor folliculi. The granulosa cells and the theca follicular cells, they are located around the follicle. In this picture, we can see the degenerated follicle. It, uh, it is visible that the granulosa cells, they fall into the lumen of the follicle. And the end of this whole degeneration, this is this wavy eosinophilic structure, which is called the atretic follicle. Okay, let's see the next, next uh, structure, which is the fallopian tube. I mentioned that the function of the fallopian tube is to help the uh, oocyte to go from the abdominal cavity to the wall, to the uh, cavity of the uterus. This is very narrow there in the proximal part, but this distal part it is uh, enlarged. Here we can talk about ampulla. And there we can see this finger-like protrusions, what I told you, the fimbriae, which will cover the surface of the ovary, which will help to the oocyte uh, to go to the lumen of the fallopian tube. But uh, this is a really sensitive uh, part uh, of this whole system, because um, uh, normally there in the ampulla will happen the fertilization when the egg will meet with the sperm cells. But uh, if we have problem, maybe a closure in the fallopian tube or other anatomical malformations, in this case uh, the oocyte maybe remain within the abdominal cavity and will start the implantation maybe on the surface of the ovary or on the surface of the peritoneum or on the surface of the uterus or within the lumen of the fallopian tube and this is called the extra uterine pregnancy, extra uterine gravity, this uh, uh, situation. Here you can see that within the lumen of the fallopian tube we have a very uneven surface, a lot of folds you can see within the mucous membrane. So that's why the uh, fertilized um, and the fertilized oocyte, the blastocyst could be implanted to the uh, to the wall where we have a very very rich uh, arterial supply, uh, blood supply. So this will start to grow the implanted embryo will start to grow and after when we'll reach critical um, shape side, after the vessels which are located within the wall of the fallopian tube will rupture and we have a very, could have a very very big bleeding which is the life threatening uh, situation in this case. Uh, so we have to be really careful uh, when we can uh, recognize this one. Um, one more thing, so on the surface of the fallopian tube we can see a simple columnar epithelium with kind of cilia 
on the top. These superficial modifications, they can help uh, to the egg to transport from uh, the abdominal cavity to the cavity of the uterus. The next structure, what I would like to describe you, this is the uterus. Uh, the uterus is um, uh, like my hand, it's not so big structure. We can divide it into two main parts. The upper part is called the body of the uterus, which is approximately 4.5 centimeter. And the lower part is called the neck, of the uterus, which is called the cervix, it's uh, 2.5 centimeter. And um, on the top of the body, we can distinguish a smaller part, which is called the fundus. This part of the uterus is covered by peritoneum, and here you can see the double layer of the peritoneum, which is called the broad ligament of the uterus, which will fix it to the lateral wall of the uh, pelvis. So if you see the cervix, um, this is the insertion of the vagina, which is called the fornix of the vagina. Based on this point, we can divide the cervix into two main parts. That part which is located within the vagina, this is called the portio vaginalis. And that part which is above the fornix is called the supravaginal part of the cervix. In that picture we can see the cavity of the uterus, which is a triangular shaped cavity within the body. It has a very 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 small lumen and it will continue to the lumen of the fallopian tube. You can see it is very narrow in the proximal part and after it will be dilatated will be the ampulla and here is the direct communication between the fallopian tube and the cavity of the abdomen or the cavity of the abdomen. And there you can see that it will go towards the cervical canal and with the external orifice will communicate with the, the lumen of the vagina. There you can see the layers, the wall, layers of the wall of the uterus. The outermost layer is called the peritoneum, which is simple squamous epithelium, is the outermost part of it. After the thicker layer of the wall is called the myometrium, which is, consists of smooth muscle cells. And finally, the innermost layer is called the endometrium. We will talk about the changes of the endometrium in the other lecture. And um, there I will describe you the, in details the histological changes too. Uh, here, uh, in this picture, uh, you can see the position of the uterus. The position of the uterus is here, you can see in the mid-sagittal section of uh, the pelvis. Uh, anteriorly to the uterus, here you can see the bladder, the urinary bladder. And behind the uterus, there you can see uh, the rectum. So normally the uterus is lying on the surface of, uh, of the bladder, so it's not in a straight position. There you can see the position of the vagina and this is the position uh, of the uterus. And these are the two, the, the lowest part of the abdominal cavity. The, these are called pouches or excavations. The first one is the vesico uterine pouch between the bladder and the uterus and this one is the recto uterine pouch between the rectus and the uh, uterus, rectum and the uterus. This is the lowest part of the abdominal cavity. What we can examine through the vagina uh, and if we have maybe blood or pus or water or fluid within the abdominal cavity, this part will be uh, bulging out. So we can, with physical examination, we can check 
uh, this uh, it's called a Douglas Douglas pouch. Here you can see the picture about the Douglas puncture. Um, this is just a theoretical way how we can, uh, I would say, collect fluid and blood from this uh, cavity. In a clinical practice, now they do not use this um, uh, puncture, but uh, it is very important to know that this is the lowest part of the abdominal cavity and we can touch it with physical examination. Okay, here you can see the picture. Uh, the normal position of the uterus and the vagina there. Normally the vagina is located not in the longitudinal direction, it's going a little posteriorly. And after we have one angle which is called antiversion, this is the uh, this is the position of the cervix and after the other axis will show you the position of the body of the uterus. This um, angle between the cervix and the corpus of the uterus, uterus is called the deflection of the uterus. Here you can see some abnormal position and of course in this picture also you can see the abnormal position of the uterus when the diaphragm, urogenital diaphragm is not strong enough and the uterus uh, will fall down through the vagina. This is called the prolapse of the uterus. Finally, at the end of the presentation, I would like to summarize you this schematic picture which uh, shows you the hormonal regulation of the development of the follicle and the hormonal regulation of the changes of the endometrium through the menstrual cycle. The first day of the menstrual cycle will start with the menstruation. So this is how the woman uh, knows that, okay, this is the starting of my menstrual cycle. Here you can see the changes of the endometrium, what I will tell you later more detail, but just only a few words. So the first part of the cycles in the first four days will start with the menstruation. The upper part of the endometrium will fall down. And after this one, the first part of the cycle, this is called the proliferative stage when the glands and the connective tissue will proliferate. Uh, and this is under the effect of oestrogen, which is produced by the developing follicles. In the middle of the cycle will be the ovulation, and the corpus luteum will produce progesterone. And because of the effect of the progesterone, the endometrium will change. The glands will produce a lot of secretion. This will be the, the fluid and this will be the nutrition of the implanted embryo in the future. And the cells which are located here in the endometrium, they will store this nutrition. And that's why we have a very special changes within the endometrium. If we have fertilization, the progesterone, corpus luteum, will produce more and more progesterone. And this whole endometrium will be stronger, bigger, and will form placenta later. But if we have no fertilization, in this case the hormone level will drop and the menstrual cycle will start again. So here you can see the development of the follicle in this picture. In the middle we have the ovulation and after the ovulation we can talk about corpus luteum. And those pictures will form you the changes of the hormone levels. So the highest level is the hypothalamus, which will produce gonadotropin-releasing hormone. It will regulate the anterior pituitary, which will produce FSH and LH. FSH will regulate the follicular uh, development. Here you can see the level of it. Here you can see the pink, uh, the level of the LH, which will, which will form a very huge peak before the ovulation because it will stimulate the ovulation. And the second part will uh, represent the levels, the oestrogen and progesterone level. Here you can see the oestrogen level, 
also in the two phases, both phases of the menstrual cycle. Here we have oestrogen also in both parts, but the progesterone we have only in the second part of the menstrual cycle, in the proliferative, after the proliferative stage, after the ovulation, only just in the secretory phase you can see the progesterone because then the corpus luteum will produce it. Uh, the histology of the uterus, it is also really an uh, important part uh, of uh, the description of the female genitalia. Here you can see the main part of the endometrium in histological uh, pictures, you can see it very well. Uh, I told you the changes of the endometrium during the a menstrual cycle. So the, at the beginning we can talk about the proliferative stage and after we have the secretory phase of the uterus. Uh, we can divide the endometrium into two main parts. The lower part is called stratum basale and the ap apical part is call called stratum functionale. Under this, you can see a little part of the myometrium. What's the function of this layer? From the stratum basale, we will, will develop all of the other layers. The stratum functionale will be that which will fall down during the menstruation. This is within the endometrium with higher magnification. You can see the glands and between them the stroma the cell-rich connective tissue, and on the surface you can see simple columnar epithelium with kinesidia. This is the epithelium of the uterus. So this is the first stage of the whole endometrium, the first phase of the uterus during the proliferation. And after, because of the effect of the progesterone, here you can see that the glands, they will be bigger. They have bigger lumen. They start to secrete a lot of nutrition. And we can divide this functional part into two main parts. The upper part will be the stratum compactum. And the lower part will be the stratum spongiosum, spongy part because the glands, they look like a spongy. They start to produce a lot of nutrition. And on the apical part, we have a stratum compactum, where we can see very huge enlarged cells. It's called pre-decidual cells, which will store a lot of nutrition, and they are waiting for the implanted embryo. This was the end of the presentation of the first part of my lecture and from this I will continue in the next presentation. Thank you for your attention.